Hi guys, Goffy here and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I wanna talk about the Fuji X100V and the Leica M10. Now for many people, these are two very, very different cameras. And if you come here to tell me that, don't worry, I know because I own them both. However, for me personally, they do fulfill a pretty similar role when it comes to my photography. Both of these cameras are my everyday carry cameras and they're the cameras that accompany me with pretty much everywhere I go. And in today's video, I wanna talk about whether or not there's actually any value in owning both. Do these two cameras kind of complement each other or do they overlap or clash enough that it actually makes no sense to have them both in the same camera bag? And to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bit of a back and forth, the pros and cons of each. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk about kind of my personal opinion and how it falls for me based on my own user case. So first of all, then we're actually gonna kick off with a pro for the X100V. And that pro is the fact that the camera can actually be used pretty much as a point and shoot. If you really want to, you can set most settings to auto and fire away. It's also a camera that's very, very easy to use one handed. So for me personally, I kind of think of the X100V sometimes as a very good camera for if photography isn't really the main focus of whatever you're doing. I don't know, you're on a day trip with family and photography is a bit of an element to it, but not the main focus. Conversely then, you've got the M10, which you have to at least focus this camera, so you have to have some sort of involvement in the actual photo taking aspect, which if you're actually going out to do photography, might be a really good positive. But at the same time, when photography isn't the focus, it is a pretty hard camera to get away with using. Next up then, and I think this is another win for the X100V, and it's kind of two things that overlap with each other. One of them is weather sealing, and another is risk. Now, weather sealing wise, the X100V is the only of these two cameras that is weather sealed, as long as you have an adapter on the front. Some people are telling you that the M10 is weather sealed, like I just don't advertise it, but if Leica aren't willing to endorse it, I'm not either. We also then get to this kind of element of risk. Even if the X100V wasn't so weather sealed, because of the value of the difference between these two cameras, I'm more likely to risk the X100V to get an image than I am the M10. Now you might instantly just suddenly think going to places or holiday locations that might be crime hotspots. I'm not really talking about that. I'm talking much closer to home. A really good example for me would be a party with some friends. We could easily get a pint of beer over a camera and the M10, not willing to risk it. X100V on the other hand, because it's cheaper in the first place, I'm far more willing to kind of put the camera at risk to get good images. I know it's easy to talk just price and say, well, the Leica's silly expensive, so you shouldn't get that. You should get the X100V because it's better value for money. But arguably, if you can afford both of these cameras, the price is less of an element, but I do think your willingness to risk a camera definitely changes the sort of images that you're gonna be capturing. And can you truly call a camera an everyday carry like my M10 if I'm not willing to carry it every day. Away from that then, a win for the M10 has got to be lens choice. The M10, you can shoot whatever lens you want. There's hundreds of them out there. You can adapt vintage lenses, use modern lenses. And with the X100V, you're arguably stuck. Now, interestingly for me, with my Leica M10, I've got a 28mm, a 35mm and a 50mm lens. And all three of those can actually be adapted on the X100V with the wide angle converter and the teleconverter. I've actually got the wide angle converter for the X100V and I love it because I really like that 28mm focal length. However, one thing that you can't get away from with the X100V is the fact that the lens is an F2 lens and the fact that it is a crop sensor. You just can't get the same images as you can with the M10 with say a Summerlux and that full frame. So there's always gonna be that arguably a little bit of compromise in there somewhere in terms of picking up the X100V over the M10 when it comes to image quality and that extra flexibility that different lenses offer. Next up then, one of the big pros for the X100V has got to be them Fuji JPEGs. Now, for me personally, this is one of the really big draws of Fuji as a whole. The JPEG options in there are insane, and I've made lots of YouTube videos on how you can kind of get the most out of them, how you can build your own recipes, and how you can go and find some online, and also recommended some of my favorite ones, and I absolutely love getting involved with this. If you're somebody that absolutely hates editing, you can almost guarantee that there is a way of setting up your Fuji camera to emulate that look that you you want using the JPEG settings in camera. The M10 just cannot compare here. The new Leica M11 does have some extra JPEG functionality in it, but it's still nowhere near the levels that Fuji offer. If you're into your JPEGs, Fuji is gonna be the clear winner here. 
Another win for the M10 then has got to be the build quality. These Leica cameras do feel incredible and you'll probably see lots of people talking maybe a little bit too fondly of their Leicas online, but they do genuinely feel great. The X100V is not a bad feeling camera. It feels very well made, but at the end of the day, it does feel like pretty much any other camera out there. Now for many people, you'll be saying, yeah, but just because your camera feels good doesn't make it take any better images. No, you're right. But at the same time, because it feels good, the I want to pick the M10 up and I want to take more images with it in the first place. The design, the feel of the M10 makes me want to use it and therefore sometimes that may be the decider between me picking up the M10 over the X100V. I'm somebody that has a bit of a kind of soft spot when it comes to design and build and form and function all of that sort of stuff so for me the fact that the M10 is built so nicely does make me want to pick it up. Now I think what I'm going to say next is definitely relevant for both of these cameras, but definitely one more so than the other. And that's the fact that I think both of these cameras fit better in a collection alongside a more typical mirrorless camera. Now in the past, I owned a Leica M240 as my only camera. Now these cameras, these Leicas are by design pretty restrictive. And sometimes it's them restrictions that bring out the better side of these cameras. You have to think about the image and maybe you take better photos, but at the same time, if them restrictions are stopping you from being able to do what you want, then restrictions become very frustrating. With the M240 is my only camera, I used to get annoyed at times. And having a camera like the X-H2S to kind of fill in the gaps when maybe you do want autofocus is definitely a benefit. I think the X100V has kind of the same thing at times. There's certain things that the X100V is just not great at. Autofocus is arguably still one of them. And having a camera like the X-H2S as well makes my enjoyment of the X100V that little bit more. So then that's a bit of to and throw in between these two cameras, but ultimately then, what is my personal situation with these two cameras? Now, one of these two cameras has barely left the house at all in the last three months, and that one is the X100V. Three months ago, I bought the M10, and since then, the X100V has got next to no use at all. Now, I'm not bashing either of these two cameras. I love them both. I've enjoyed the X100V an awful lot over the last couple of years, and I'm enjoying the M10 an awful lot in the last three months. Now, before making this video, I decided it'd be a little bit biased of me if I hadn't taken the X100V out recently. So last weekend, when I was in Bath, I took just the x 100 V. And to be honest with you guys, I did wish towards the end of that day that I had taken the M10 instead. Quickly running back then through all of the points that I made earlier. When it came to easy photography where maybe you're going out on a trip and photography is not the main element, I said the X100V was the better camera. And it is. But for me personally, I don't do too much of this type of photography. And if I do, I'm generally happy with an iPhone picture. When it actually then comes to trips where photography is the main focus, which I do quite a lot of, mainly because of this YouTube channel, then I do want to focus in on crafting images. The M10 for me is the camera I choose. So therefore, that kind of to and throw pro and con that we had at the start, the M10 is the winner for me. We then said about bad weather and risk. And I think this is the main reason I still own the X100V. It just so happens in the last few months, I've not really been in risky situations and we've not really had bad weather. So the X100V hasn't been picked up because I've just not been in them situations. The next thing then we spoke about was build quality. And for me, this is one of the really big ones. Build quality makes me want to pick up the M10. It's really hard to describe for people that haven't held an M camera, but they feel great to the point that honestly, it makes me want to pick it up more than any other camera than I've ever owned. And then we came on to lens choices. Lens choice for me, like we said, I don't mind the 28, 35 mil, 50 mil kind of focus lengths that both of these cameras can do but the m10 just means i can shoot wider open and i know picking up the x100v is going to be a bit of a compromise not much of a compromise the x100v is an amazing camera but enough of a compromise that i can see the difference between the images and then finally at the end we spoke about how if you could only own one camera ever then well the x100v would have to be the camera for me the M10 doesn't do video, so I'd have to can this YouTube channel. So for me personally though, I do have a different camera, so I can kind of enjoy the restrictions of the M10, knowing that if I ever need something that the M10 can't do, I do have a backup camera that can fulfill all of my photography needs. So guys, I think that answers it. For me then, these two cameras definitely clash. The M10 is the camera that I'm picking up pretty much all of the time, and the X100V is the camera that's staying at home. And that's all based on my personal use case. Different people are gonna have very, very different opinions. And if you own both of these cameras or have strong feelings either way, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video though, guys, please do not forget to like and subscribe. There's plenty more Fuji, Leica, and travel content coming to the channel. And if I don't catch you before then, also have a really good Christmas and happy holidays. Thank you guys for watching. Cheers.